Okay, this video, I'm going to explain how to set up um, boreholes and cross sections in GMS. The video is going to follow along with the tutorial that was developed by Aquaveo, uh, and it's available in PDF form. Uh, it looks like this, and it's uh, available for free at their website. And so I'm going to work through the steps that are described in this PDF. So what we want to do here in, in a big picture is to get stratigraphic data from boreholes. This would be obtained from cores, for example, that were um, obtained during drilling. Uh, get the core data into an electronic form and bring it into GMS and create a geologic model that we can use to then create a uh, hydrogeologic flow and transport model. And so the first step is to take core data and translate it into a file. So I've shown an example right here of um, a, a, a kind of simple uh, set of core data. Uh, and what I've shown here are three different geologic units that I'll call number two, number one, and number four. And uh, the ground surface is at an elevation of 37 meters or feet or whatever the length units in your model. And then uh, these units here, 15, 0, and minus 95, are the uh, elevations of these contacts. So 37 is the ground surface. 15 is the contact between 2 and 1. 0 is the contact between 1 and 4. And minus 19.5 is the lower contact. So if we look over here in the data file, um, this is a little graphic depiction of well 1G. So it's the first well um, described in this data file. So here's the name. And then this is the XY location. And you can see they're all the same. And then the Z values here correspond to these Z values. And then the material is shown here, and that corresponds to this material. So the way this format works is the, there, the material, like the geologic unit, is numbered. And the Z value is the elevation of the top of that geologic unit. And that's true for all of the entries, all except the, low, the last one. The last entry in each borehole is, it has the same material designation as the one above it, but the elevation that it gives in the Z column is the bottom of the borehole. Okay, so you can see they're all set up like that. This is borehole 2G, and it has units 2, 4, 2, and 2. And So this file, without this little graphic here, is available as a text file uh, called holes. And what we'll do to start out is bring that file into GMS. So we're just going to go to open and go to this text file and the first thing that we'll see is is this menu we want to make sure that the heading row here is checked because we've got this uh, first row that has some designation in it and we go next then we need to make sure that we identify the data type as borehole data and if we do that then we see the first column is the borehole name, then the X, Y, Z location of uh, this contact. And then the fourth column is, the, or the fifth column is the soil ID. So we finish that. And uh, this then brings in the, uh, the borehole data. And probably when you first bring it in, it won't look quite like this. So you'll want to go to display and change the diameter. Uh, so you're going to display borehole data and go here to borehole faces. Made that seven feet. That's going to make the, the width of this borehole a bit wider than the default. 
Uh, also click here under borehole names. Uh, so that's going to turn on this, this little name right here. And while you're at it, the horizon IDs, I also turned that on. Um, and actually I'm going to just let's leave horizon IDs off for now. So I turn it back on or I turn the horizon IDs off and I get something that looks like this. These are the borehole names. So you can see that there are these different colors. Um, these are the borehole materials that were identified in that spreadsheet file. And we can go up here to the materials and take a look at that. Um, and I've edited this. So I've given these some names, sand, clay, and silt. Um, probably when you first start this up, it'll be called material one, material two, and material three. So once you just go in there and change these names, you just select it and type. And I also changed the colors around a little bit. So why don't you try changing the colors to get a color scheme that suits you. Uh, and then we hit OK. All right, so these are the um, spatial arrangement of the borehole. And we can see this is a perspective view right now. And what we're going to want to do is to um, first thing we'll do is expand the um, well basically do some correlations and we'll do that by creating some cross sections in between these boreholes so there are a couple of ways that we can do it but the first way will be to just use an automatic cross section generator and this will create cross sections between um, boreholes and their nearest neighbors and so these are the cross section lines that were created uh, and here they are and the designation is uh, 7g to 5g so that's between the two boreholes that form the endpoints of these cross sections and we can populate that by going to autofill blank cross sections and we can either create the cross sections by matching horizon ids which are contacts and matching um, uh, materials. And we'll want to use materials right now. So select materials. And then the uh, algorithm runs and it generates a um, correlation between these different boreholes. And it'll create the cross section. So there's the cross section. Um, with the materials that are in the different boreholes um, correlated. Okay, so that looks pretty good. We're on our way to generating a geologic model. Um, but we want to try doing a couple other things um, that, that might give us a little better control over what the uh, correlation looks like. And the first thing that we'll do is we'll just delete the cross sections here. And the first thing that I'm going to want to do is to tie in these boreholes to a topographic surface. So if I go to open and this top elevation um, file, that'll come in as a tin. And this is the upper surface. And you can see that the boreholes are lined up pretty close to that upper surface, but here there's one, for example, that's off by just a little bit. So we'll then regenerate these cross sections. And now we get to select that we can snap top of the um, cross section to the tin. So we'll, we'll select that. And when I brought this tin in, um, it's called top elevation. You might just want to check and make sure that it has that name. That just allows you to keep it straight. Um, the bottom uh, will just, we won't specify that. 
And so we'll hit OK. And uh, now the cross sections are, um, are, are um, following this tin. And one of the things, for example, let's turn this off. The, notice right in here, see that there's a little, there's a dip in the topographic cross section. And so when we turn this off, we can see that dip there, that there's a dip in the topographic surface, and that creates this dip here in the cross sections. Okay, so that allows us to modify these cross sections. You see a lot of these have a, a, have a bit of a, um, so, uh, of, a, of a dip. So you can see they're just uh, following the topography along this upper surface. Okay, so that's what we want. And we'll go and take a look at what these cross sections look like. We'll match using materials again. Okay, and there's the cross sections. You can see, looks a little bit different now. We have this uh, this brown unit, this clay that's exposed right here in in this particular uh, rendition. All right, well that looks looks good. Looks like we're making some progress, but you know these correlations were done with an automatic algorithm, and they're pretty good, but um, there, we want to have the option to um, make the correlations as we see fit and also to draw in the cross sections as we see fit. So what I'll do is just delete these and now I'm going to go and draw in the cross sections um, manually and I have to go from borehole to borehole so I'll put in a cross section that like that there's one cross section and let's have another one that goes like that. Okay, so there are two cross sections that I want to see and I can uh, just try going to autofill blank cross sections and see what I get with the autofill. Okay, so that looks, looks pretty good, but I really want to have some flexibility to do some editing on this because um, maybe I don't really like the correlations. So let's take a look. Um, let's let's go. Let's say we don't really like this cross section. I want to revise it. There's uh, 2G to 7G. So that is this cross section right here. I select it and then I go to edit. And here's the cross section. So maybe I don't like the correlation of this thin sand from uh, this borehole to that borehole. So I'll revise it by deleting this and then um, drawing in the correlations that I want to use. So there's this contact here that I say, well, that's just going to be a thin sand that terminates like that. And this will also be just a thin sand lens like that. And then this contact correlates with that contact. And this one is a pinch out like that. And so draw in the correlations and then repopulate it. And I get that as the, the new cross section and I hit OK. So this is what I used to have. And I hit OK. And it revises it. OK, so this allows me to go in and adjust the correlations based on the way that I want them to be. So this is kind of nice because I have the option to both use the benefit of the automatic correlation um, as really a first estimate. But then I can go and modify it however I, I, I feel is, is more appropriate. One thing too that I could do is um, select multiple cross sections because you know when I'm editing this one, I might also be interested in what this one is doing. So I could select both of these 
and so I see that uh, we've got cross section that looks like that, and um, we can then go and uh, and and edit this, uh, and also switch over to this one here. That's that's this section here, and we could we could edit that. Um, we could delete it and redraw it as uh, however we've, we felt was, was appropriate.